Hi guys, Ryan here with the London Craftsman again. Thanks for coming back. And today's video is all about this planar thickness sub behind me. I know recently um, I haven't been doing any woodwork sort of videos just because I've been repairing the roof above. If you have a look, repairing that. So that's been on my mind, getting the um, roof sorted. And also we've been doing a lot of spraying videos just because at the moment it's easier for me just to go in there while I'm doing the spraying and make a quick and easy video. Not only that, I'm giving you a few tips of um, how to use the airless sprayers anyway. So hopefully um, there's some useful information there. Without further ado, let's talk about this machine behind me, which I bought ultimately for my ultimate workbench, which I'm gonna be building very soon. Um, you probably heard about that, that um, it's going to be sort of like a 3.6 metre by 1.6 metre bench being built. So that was bought with the intention to have it inside, but it's been laying around in a box and just taken out every time I actually need it. Um, and we actually need it today. So as you can see to my right, we've got a piece of oak, a lot of random pieces of oak. This was a coffee table. It's all solid, laminated pieces, of course, little staves. You can see it's glued up in little pieces. Um, I'll show, I'll put a picture up now, right now. Hopefully it's up there so you can see what it looked like. But we've split it apart because ultimately we've got a job which is solid oak and um, there's nowhere around near me where I can buy it, um, any oak, without driving 100 miles or waiting 10, 10 days turnaround time, plus it's unbelievable prices for five planks, as you can see, this size planks, there's one more to come. I was being charged at like 280 pounds just for the oak itself. So the reason I bought this unit, this coffee table is because it had a top and a bottom which I can cut out some nice solid pieces. Um, lovely oak. Um, I'm gonna show you planing one up in a moment. These are all the offcuts which I don't need, but I should still be able to utilize them at some point. I did get four pieces out of this furniture. Um, all without any holes. This one had to be clamped and glued together in two pieces, so these are gonna get cut off. Just so I can get my five planks without any holes. Anyway, I think there is one board without with holes, but that's gonna be placed in a way where you won't see it, right at the top. I'll show you what we're actually making. It's not a very good drawing at the moment. It's just, um, it's enough for us at the moment. It's, it's a very simple unit. It's a little vanity unit. So it's got a top, a middle shelf, and a bottom shelf, and two sides. The interior is veneer, so we didn't need to worry about that. And we've got three mirrored doors on the front and with like a little cubby seam. And there we go. So we, we needed to get the top, this middle shelf, the bottom, and the two sides out of the solid. If you walk around here, this is all veneered stuff already been made. This is oak veneer. So the backing was oak veneer and the doors were open here just to keep costs down. Obviously, we didn't want to make the doors out of solid because you know, solid can move and bow on you. They had to be nice and stable. Um, also, it would have been too expensive to make all these pieces out of solid oak. So, one thing we were worried about was color because solid is a lot more dense than the veneer itself. Um, so we were hoping you know, we, we didn't really test it to see if we'd get the colors right, but we have just tested it before the video uh, with an off cut. This is solid and we're really chuffed to say that we can match the solid up with the veneer with the oils and get it spot on. Really happy about that. The Osmo is exactly the same color on the veneer that it is on the solid. Because when the customer came around and tested the oils with me in the workshop a few weeks back, we were testing it and we noticed that the veneer was taking up the oil a lot darker or a lot more, soaking up a lot more than the solid. So we really, really polished this up with, um, we went 120, 240, 320, and I think Sean even went over it with something like 480 or something like, along those lines. So we're basically polishing the surface so it wouldn't take as much. So when we come to sand these pieces up, we're gonna sand them with only 240, just so we're balancing it. So external parts, the doors, for example, their veneer, and the backing is veneer, and these internal shelves, they're veneer too, okay? That said, let's go back onto the machine, show you there all the offcuts. You can see the tan color. 
and you can see the tan colour of the oak, how it came. You know, all these oak units that come pre-made, they've always got a coat of lacquer on the top, which makes them sort of like a caramel colour oak, which is not the colour that we want. We needed it to be sort of this colour, the same as the oak. If you just stay there, I'll get you an off cut. This is an off cut of oak veneer. You can see oak veneer, it's MDF in the centre, but real wood on the top. We needed it to be that colour or the close to be able to, once we'd oiled it, for them to have any chance of matching. So when I bought this unit to break down and cut up and uh, plane up, this is the colour that they were, okay? We've only done one side. So what I'm gonna do is show you the machine going, um, skimming a tiny little layer off. When you're planing oak or you're planing anything solid, um, hardwood, you really need to take off minimal. It's got on the machine how much you can take off. So it does have a little sign here. So anything under 150 wide, so you can take off three millimeters max. Um, anything between 150 and 240, 1 1.5 mil, and anything over 240, you can only take a mil off. This is probably all softwood sizes. And when you go oak, just don't try and take too much off. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I've got that set up, I'm gonna just take a tiniest amount more off, um, drop that down half a mil. We haven't got a dust extractor, I have bought the extractor. Is it worth showing you? Do you wanna see the hood? Yeah, look, let me quickly get the hood. Come through, because this is my whole kit. So the machine came in a box like that. And I didn't think it was gonna come with an, um, a hood, but it did. So I ended up buying a spare one. Oh, where is it now? I mean, where's the preparation? John didn't prepare for this video, did I? It is probably buried down there, sod it. Let's just let the off cuts um, just fly out at the end. We're going off a little bit off track again, aren't we? Yeah. That's what I do just, best. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted just to go back and show you my collection. Come on, let's have another look. I want to show you. You might have seen a picture on Instagram. Have a look at those. Quickly go through, because I might even make a video. We've got a 390, we've got a 390 Pro Step, a 595, a 695 a 390 Pro Step and a 390 again. Basically the Pro Steps are the same as the 390s, so these are all the same, but this has got a different shape. It's got a frame and you can stand on it. And then you've got one of my favorites. It's the smallest, but my favorite. It's the Ultra Max, the one that sprays all base paint, solvent based. So that'll be another video. I'm not gonna spoil that for you, but I did wanna share because I spent probably 100 hours cleaning paint off those machines in the last couple of weeks, so. Going back to the thickness side again. Each quarter turn, if you have a look up here, um, is half a millimeter. So that'll be half, half, half. So you can gauge how much. So if you want to do increments without looking at the gauge, you just, you know, for example, if you want to just drop it down a quarter of a mil, half a mil, you've got that guide on the top. Um, it also tells you which way is down. So the arrow is showing you this way. Uh, it's got a 1650 watt motor, nice and powerful. Um, it doesn't give you any of the, with the little dips that most planers give you right at the end. I don't seem to be getting that right at the end. And to be honest, I don't even need to really sand this, it's that smooth. I don't know what it'd be like if it was all knotty um, and the grain was a bit gnarly, sort of like um, European oak or something like that. But with this nice, I think this is possibly American oak. Um, it planes up really nicely. So let's turn it on. It's not that noisy. That's what it's gonna be like. If you get any better shots, how's that in the light? Yeah, it's nice. You do any close ups? Yeah, nice. 
It really is a brilliant machine. It's one of those machines that is just going to get you out of trouble. For example, if I didn't have this thickness up for this particular job where I had to take all the lacquer off, I'd be sanding that with a belt sander. With the belt sander, you'd be getting curved edges. The board would be completely square. I can also just run it through the machine like so. So shall we give you a, uh, shall we give you a little demo on that as well? How big did I say that was? I can't remember. 125. Okay, that's 125. And I think you can register it for warranty as well. Extra warranty, I believe, with the Makitas. So I did that. So this is a table saw cut um, with a relatively rough blade. Um, I will need to um, do both edges and get them to the right size, but I've, I've got enough on here to show you and demo it. <laughs> So as long as you're starting with a square piece of timber, obviously if it's not square, you're only going to be planing up to the same shape as what the piece of timber is. You'll need a jointer for that. But if it's square, it's going to give you lovely crisp faces and edges. It's like a brand new board again. If we compare it against that piece of furniture I showed you earlier to what it is now, um, considering, like I said, these um, I was being charged I think, 250 or something around that number for five boards, you know, not only that, we're upcycling. There's a lot of good points to reusing this piece of furniture and having a machine like this, just upcycling. It makes it possible, doesn't it? Take pieces apart, plane them up nice and easily. Uh, How wide does this do? Maybe that is the maximum size because it's got a little lip here on the tray so it, it can't veer off. Yeah, 300 I'm guessing is the maximum size and it goes up to 160. Um, so nice chunky pieces, you know, for example, you could get a scaffold board in there. Just put that straight through as long as the banding's taken off. Right, so dropping this down to 35. So if you, you know, if you've got this machine and you're planing up scaffold boards, you know, you've got brand new pine underneath there basically, haven't you? So if we get back to nice new boards. Now this piece of timber is a little bit stained, but you've gone from there to there and it just, possibilities are endless, aren't they, with a thickness up. And just for the sake of being portable, take it on site, you can get 110 versions, you get 240 versions. I always stick with Makita anyway. You know, if you've got, I mean, I know there are some cheaper brands, but if they're 50, 60, 70 quid cheaper, I would say just go that extra mile, go Makita. Um, let's open these up and get rid of the dust. Anything else to say, John? That's it. See you in the next, next video. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, I hope it's been to some use. Any questions, give us a shout. Take it easy. Bye-bye.